Oh look, it's that thing you thought was finally gone from the discourse forever. Aren't you happy I brought it back? So for those blissfully uninitiated, ludo-narrative dissonance is when the ludic systems and narrative construction of a game are talking at cross-purposes. The story told through how you play the game and the one told through its writing contradict each other. Say you had a lovable rogue of a protagonist who just so happens to murder hundreds of people while you're in control of him, and the script that refuses to let a detail like that cramp its style. That's just an example I made up though, I'm sure no real games actually do that. Now, there's lots of questions we could be asking here. Is ludonarrative dissonance even a useful concept to bring up? Wouldn't it make way more sense to treat games as holistic works, rather than splitting them off into discrete chunks and then boxing those chunks off into separate categories that either are or aren't in conflict with each other? I don't know. Is Uncharted dissonant though? Yes. God, yes. Have you seen? Yes. Look, the devs put a trophy called Ludo Narrative Dissonance into Uncharted 4 that you get for mowing down a thousand dudes. They know. This is not an open question. There's no avoiding the absurdity of Nathan Drake's maddening body count, especially when you then look at the game's framing of him as an emotionally stable dude capable of forming semi-healthy relationships with other humans. Him. Uh, this blood psychopath. You, the presumably non-mass murdering audience, are supposed to identify with him. That's why his face is so eminently squeezable, why so much of his arc revolves around these cute bits with his loved ones. He's even almost as bad as Crash Bandicoot as you are, because just like you, he's not a real gamer. So there's something of a contradiction there, and of course that means there's a lot of pretentious snobs running around who fancy themselves as having advanced beyond the basic conversations about graphics and gameplay that will inevitably bring up this frankly quite glaring example of ludonarrative dissonance and then proceed to criticise the game for it. I have, however, advanced beyond those conversations. And I have resolved this dissonance in the most pretentious way I could think of. What if I told you that the violence perpetrated by Drake isn't real? Shocking! I know. No, what I mean by that is that it's not diegetic, as in, we're not supposed to interpret it as Nathan's literal canonical actions. And I know this is venturing into some mental gymnastics territory, but try to get gymnasty with me for a moment anyway. I don't. Because it's the story and the characterization of the main guy. Don't seem to take all the shooting explosion murder fun times on face value, then I don't see why I should. Ah! There's this thing games do called abstraction. It doesn't get talked about a huge amount. I mean, it does get talked about, just not a huge amount. I'm saying I didn't make it up. But it's at the core of the language that games use to communicate ideas. Abstraction is the game version of suspending disbelief, of representing complex information through simplified, abstracted systems. Like how right now I'm not really aiming and shooting a gun, I'm waggling a stick around and then pressing a button. Or, somewhat more distressingly, how the horrifying life-ending injuries that Drake inflicts on other human beings translate to a bit of audio-visual feedback in these little cross is popping up on your UI. Abstraction is one of those things that you don't really notice when it's working as intended, but it's a huge part of what makes games, games. It's how complicated ideas get translated into rules and systems that players can understand and interact with. Combat systems, for example. Now I guess what you see on the screen isn't necessarily a literal depiction of what's happening from the character's point of view. Is probably one of those points that would be easier to argue if I was talking about a game like, say, Undertale, where the combat is both turn-based and visually broken down to some icons moving about, so the abstraction is immediately obvious. Though you get the point. The firefights in Uncharted may have a lot more fidelity than Undertale's bullet hell menus, which makes Uncharted the objectively better game. Obviously. But those firefights are still just a representation of whatever the character is supposed to be doing that's inevitably going to have to be abstracted to some degree. The question is how much? We know that the gamified shootouts are a representation of a particular set of ideas that the game wants to convey, but those ideas could be as simple as this bloke is mass murdering thousands of people, or, and hear me out on this, it could just be the case of trying to get across a particular mood. 
You see, somewhere during the concept phase, Uncharted came down with a serious case of the world trottings, the adrenaline pumping itis, or the swashbuckling syndrome, the doctors aren't sure exactly. And the resulting symptoms of big adventure aren't just aesthetic either, the infection has reached the team's lungs. I mean, uh, design priorities. The devs needed to get across a sense of action and suspense, to simulate a feeling of danger, and because this is a game, they needed to do this through play, uh, counterintuitively. The combat system, complete with all the mass murder, serves a purpose beyond what is literally being shown to you, it is instrumental in conveying tone. Do you see what I'm getting at though? It's the treachery of images. This is not a firefight. See Simon's bars on PP. It's the abstracted visual representation of a feeling. So how does Ludo narrative dissonance fit into all this? It doesn't. It literally doesn't matter. All right, it matters a bit. Uh, it's a descriptive term. It can be useful in some conversations, but the important thing to understand is that it's not a standard of quality. There's no value judgment inherent to simply identifying an example of dissonance in a game. And if you think that just being dissonant automatically makes Uncharted or indeed any game bad, you're wrong and you will be tried at The Hague. It turns out, you see, that sometimes the tone, the mood and the feeling a work of art wants to convey is more important than strict adherence to an internal consistency. Now, does that mean I'm putting my feelings over facts? Uh, yes, it does. That's how art works. Get used to it. But like, you're also not wrong if the dissonance personally bothers you. If you find this kind of thing distracting and difficult to overlook, that's fine. I forgive you. I know plenty of people who dislike Uncharted games because of this, some of whom I'm even willing to stay friends with in spite of this treason. I want to be perfectly clear here. While I was able to appreciate what the combat contributed towards the tone of these games, regardless of the dissonance it causes, I don't think it's the best possible solution to the game's specific design needs. It's just the safe one. Combat is kind of the default way this sort of thing is done, especially in the AAA space. There are ways of making a player feel excitement and danger other than making them shoot people, and Uncharted dabbles in some of them. I'm a big fan of 3D cinematic platformers and will never forgive this industry for when did to the genre. According to Jason Schreier, Uncharted 4 was even going to get rid of guns entirely for large chunks of the game before writer and director Amy Hennig left the studio under mysterious circumstances. And there are also ways of reconciling the dissonance within the game's specific mechanical framework. The noted museum exhibit The Last of Us is basically just an alternate universe Uncharted whose script goes out of its way to acknowledge all the murder, and the players, the critics, and uh, um, curators all seem to appreciate the honesty. <laughs> Thing is, I don't want every action game to make its protagonist into a grizzled, unlikable murder man just so he can avoid being called dissonant. Sometimes all I want is a fake gamer lovable rogue going on an adventure. Of course there's a small qualifier here in that there are, in fact, moments scattered throughout the series where no amount of me making up convoluted nonsense about how art supposedly works can help resolve all the distracting discrepancies. And most of these happen in Uncharted 3, which is one of the many reasons why it's the worst game in the series. But I'll get to Uncharted 3 later. For now, there's the other big problem with my whole shtick here. Because if a game wants to rely on combat to the extent of rejecting its own reality, then the combat had better be good. Which begs the question, is the combat in Uncharted any good? Yes it is. Shut up, it is. But you might want to drop it down to easy first. Why am I doing this to myself? If the story and the character is... <laughs> <laughs> My trousers came off. <laughs> I saw everything. <laughs>